I got a text from Jane saying the hair salon is closed, so I'll be looking like a Q-tip for a while, I suppose. I might have to start wearing a hat to preach in. I hope that won't offend anyone. I got to thinking, though, when I got her text, there are a lot of people who are, normally I see there, who are getting their roots colored. <laughs> So maybe looking like a Q-tip's not so bad after all. <laughs> Easter, this year seems like no other. Other years, we are praying for good weather and sunshine for Easter Sunday. So we can go out to the front of the church, sip mimosas and munch on chocolate-covered strawberries, as our children hunt for eggs on our newly mown lawn and in weeded and mulched flower beds. This year is different. I'm looking out and I'm not seeing Easter bonnets, boys in ties, bright colors all around. This year, it's different. Christ is risen! This Easter morning is more like the first Easter morning than, in or, than any Easter in our lifetimes. After Rome executes Jesus, the disciples were afraid they would be next. Not just the 12, but all those who had publicly praised him for healing them or who had been seen in public with him. Zacchaeus and Bartimaeus, for example. And all those people whose names we don't remember, but whose stories we tell the Syrophoenician woman asking for healing for her child, the Roman soldier look, asking for uh, uh, his servant to be healed, the Samaritan woman at the well, the man born blind. We are given only the story of the disciples to represent many other disciples who were sheltered indoors on that first Easter, out of public view, afraid that they would be next, as we disciples are today. How do you think the disciples spent their time indoors? What would they have been talking about? Maybe fear got the better of them, and rumors and angers seize them. I hear the soldiers are going from house to house. I hear the religious leaders are going to authorize Saul to come after us. Judas, I knew it was him. He was such a loner. We don't know what the disciples talked about then, but we do know what we are talking about now and what we're hearing. I hear there's medicine that will protect us, but the media doesn't want us to have it. Young people don't get it, so why do the old people demand that they stay inside? If China had contained it, we wouldn't be in this mess. We don't know what the disciples talked about or whether, like us, they may have prayed with words that we have been saying through the season of Lent, words of confession to clean our hearts and to prepare for Easter. We say, we forget that you have saved your people before and promise to do so again. Like us, the disciples may have returned to the prophets of old, like Jeremiah, 
who declares God's steadfast love and faithfulness, who declares the time of suffering and isolation will end. And God will build a future with our faith and our lives. But then maybe the disciples had a hard time keeping quiet because they were having so much fun together. As Jeremiah reminds us, nothing is a sure sign of God's healing presence than creativity and laughter and song. Jeremiah says again and again, we shall return to regular order when time will make sense again. We will again have season after season to cultivate, to plant, to nurture, and to harvest again. And finally, in words that mean more to us today than ever before, Jeremiah says, the day is coming when we can all go out in public again, when again we can congregate together in church and again assemble at school and again meet together on playgrounds with our children. No, as best as we can tell, the disciples were terrified and stayed indoors, afraid because they had deserted Jesus, afraid because they were known publicly as his disciples, afraid because they had no sense what would happen next, nor any idea of how to plan for the future. Yes, this Easter is more like the first Easter than any other Easter in our lifetimes. So listen well, my friends, and take heart. The disciples huddled in fear if they had known that God had raised Jesus from the dead, if they had known God was just then speaking to women at the tomb, if they had known that the women were heading toward them as quickly as they were able, if they could have looked into the future to see that when the Holy Spirit comes, Peter would stand boldly to preach the first sermon of the church. If any of this had been known to them, as it is known to us now, then they would not have huddled indoors in fear. They would have been waiting with anticipation, preparing for the future God promised them then and us now. All this comes later. But we are now given a story to carry us through this season of waiting, this time when faith in God's power to raise us up prepares us for a future of building and planting and singing and dancing. The story is carried forward just as Jesus said it would be through the least among them, women, cloaked by the invisibility of powerlessness. The same women who make meals for the disciples, wash the dirt off their feet, who quietly and in the background are present at every turn of Jesus' ministry and who are also present even at the cross when all others desert him. We honor the good men and women who are now attending at the foot of the cross when we make sacrifices on their behalf. Our future depends upon our willingness to connect the grace of God we see in Scripture with the grace of God we meet in the world. After the Sabbath, as the sun rises on the first Easter morning, these good women go to the tomb. The earth shakes, and though the Roman guards are petrified by fear, the women are ready to hear the first words uttered on Easter morning. Do not be afraid. 
I know you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, come and see the place where he lay. Imagine the courage of these women as they enter the tomb. Imagine their joy and relief in being assigned a task, something good to do quickly when something good is most needed. Go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised. The disciples, huddled in fear, cannot know the good news is speeding toward them, cannot imagine in the midst of crisis and under the threat of death that God is at work turning the world around. Friends, on this Easter morning, when we are so very much like disciples on that first Easter morning, through us, God is at work turning the world around, inspiring us to trust in resurrection power, to respond with creativity and imagination, doing the good things that we can do. For Christ is raised and the Spirit inspires great things in us. We can see more clearly now than ever before in our lifetimes. We are finding that Christ is risen and lives not with us as individuals, but as a body, each one of us able, like the women, to share the good news with others, huddled indoors, too afraid to imagine a future or believe God's resurrection power is speeding toward them and to us all. There is so much to share in this brief time we have. But we must all believe that the small good things that we do, the ways that creativity and imagination inspire us, prepare us for the day when we are at last together again in the house of the Lord, as we are together today through the Spirit of the Lord, now and always, which is the resurrection power of God. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Amen.